Today we're going to learn how to realign or retime our camshaft and our crankshaft when we've lost those marks that we need it. To do that, I first have to give you a disclaimer. Modern cam installation is a timing and it's an art. Okay? New cars can have one, two, four, or even more camshafts. They have a computer that will often adjust the timing of the cam while you're driving down the street. They can also vary how long certain valves are open and closed and under what conditions. All these things require specialized tools and adjustment. We're not going to address those modern cams here today. Instead, we're going to focus on how to install the timing gears in a classic British car that has suddenly found itself without its alignment marks. Also, we recommend that you watch your series of videos about camshafts. They're on the Moss TV page, so you can go to mossmotors.com. Off to the right, click on the button that says Moss TV, and you're in. Or if you'd like, you can go to YouTube. When YouTube is loaded, at the top of the page is a little search marks. Go ahead and just type in Moss space motors space camshaft, and you're in. So let's get started. We're going to assume the worst case scenario. Your timing marks have been removed. You've lost, your, your timing gears are gone, they're not going to be marked. Your timing is now lost, your camshaft has been changed, your crankshaft has been changed. In other words, we don't know where anything goes anymore. For the first of two parts, what we need to do is align our crankshaft. In other words, we need to get our crankshaft to number one top dead center. This is a 384-910 degree wheel. You're going to need this or something like it in order to do this job. It's indispensable. You can buy one for the cost of a lunch, so we're not talking a lot of money here. Now what I want you to do is chalk your wheels, set your parking brake, put your transmission in neutral, pull your spark plugs so you can turn your engine easily. Now, make sure that your number one piston is down. In order to do that, you're going to get a little piece of wood, something about the size of a pencil, and push it into the spark plug hole. If you feel the piston, just simply turn your crankshaft a little bit, the piston will go down, and then she's out of the way. The next thing you're going to need is you need a bolt with a 14 millimeter diameter with a thread pitch of 1.25. That's exactly the size of a spark plug thread, by the way. Okay, I'm holding a 102-742. This is a bolt that's used in late model minis, but you can get something of this dimension at your local auto parts store, so you'll be fine. Now, if we were trying to put a spark plug into an engine, we put it in just deep enough so that the end of the spark plug would be in the combustion chamber. With this, we want to thread this all the way in. What we want is when the piston tries to come up that she hits this bolt. That's important. We want it to be able to stop the piston from going up. Now, I've made a larger version of this degree wheel so you can see it a little bit better. And here's one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the end of our crankshaft. Where you put it, I mean, which way it's clocked makes no difference. So I'm deliberately going to clock this funny just so you can understand it. it's not important. Okay, now she's there. There's a little bolt you can put. So now what's going to happen is when the crankshaft is turned, this is going to rotate with it. Now, if I had an automobile engine here, there would be a series of bolt holes. There's always bolt holes. I would thread a bolt into one of the holes. I would put a piece of wire on it, sock it down, and I would bend the piece of wire to hang over the end of my degree wheel as an indicator. Well, I don't have that, so I've got something else here that's going to hold it for us. But you get the idea. We need to have an indicator over this so we know where we are. So where are we? We're set up. We've got our piston is our pistons are all ready to move. However, they can't go up and down all the way because there's a block in the number one cylinder. Okay, the uh, spark plugs are removed and we're ready to begin. What we want to do is we want to crank and turn our engine in whichever direction you wish. I'm going to start by going this way. So I'm turning my engine, turning my engine, turning my engine by hand. And as I turn it, of course, the piston's going to be coming up at any moment now. Bang! she's going to hit that bolt. The piston has come up and hit the bolt that I've put in there. Take note of what happened. Okay, this is top dead center, so I hit at 40 degrees before top dead center is where my first hit came in. Now, the piston won't go up anymore because she's against the bolt. If I turn the motor the other way, she'll go all the way down and come back again. So I'm going to turn the motor the other way this time. So I'm going to turn it. The motor's turning. The piston's going down, somewhere down around here. She's reached all the way at the bottom, and she's going to start to come back up again. And when she gets up right about there, boom, she stops again. This time, she stopped at 20 degrees after top dead center. I'm going to take note of that, ATDC. Now, what we have is we've got marks as to where the piston stopped at the top, coming up one way and coming up the other way. On the first time up, when she stopped at the 40 mark, how far was she from the top dead center mark? I don't know. 
When we brought the piston all the way down, brought it back up again and hit it again and she came to the 20 mark, how far is she from top dead center? I don't know. But can we find out anything? Well, I've got a piece of paper here. How long is this piece of paper? I don't know. But I can do this to it. If I take and fold this piece of paper so that the two sides are exactly the same length, I found the center of this piece of paper. I can do that with this, okay? From 40 degrees to zero is 40, to 20 more is 60. I have 60 degrees total. If I take the 60 degrees and divide it in two like I did with my piece of paper, I get 30 degrees. Does that work? Well, let's find out. The first time we stopped, we were at 40, so I count 30 degrees. 10, 20, 30 brings me to the 10 degrees before top dead center mark. If I go over to where I was on my 20 and I go 10, 20, 30, I'm there again. Top dead center for this crankshaft is right there. I take my bolt out of the engine and I rotate my crankshaft around until that 10, which is top dead center, is exactly under my alignment tool. Okay? At this moment, we can go ahead and put our car in gear so she won't move, the engine won't move. At this moment, the number one cylinder is exactly at top dead center. We're halfway there. All we have to do now is align the camshaft, and we're going to do that in our next video.